May your Mondays be magical. May your Tuesdays be terrific. May every day be super well, because you choose them to be. Are you having an awesome day? Sometimes that's a question you might not want to ask because people will tell you, I'm bored or I'm not happy today or my life isn't great today and you get a big long list of reasons why my life isn't great. Well, there are solutions to all of those, of course. And one of them, when people say they're bored, I always find that really interesting uh, because if you want to be healthy, fit and strong, if, you, if you're not already, if you want to have a career or business that you love, if you haven't got one already, if you want to be financially free, if you aren't already, and if you want to have great relationships, if you haven't got those already, and you want to live a life where all of those four things are all coming together and life is amazing, is it possible that you need to learn? Uh, keep learning, keep educating, keep training, keep filling your brain up with stuff that's going to add value to those four areas of your life. Now, that's why I'm here every day. That's what Romax is all about. But how does Romax exist? One of the reasons is I have a great library. I have many, in fact, multiple libraries in my house that I like to walk past because they make me feel smarter. But in, in all books, and there's that great quote, the books that you don't read can't help. Everything that you want to do in your life, the experts, and it might just be that you want to read an autobiography, which I'm really into. I really like reading about people that have done stuff, not people that talk about how to do stuff but haven't done it. And that's a choice, and I get to learn from those people. So I can't be bored. So one of the things that I always do is I have a book with me, and I'm always learning. But you don't have to have a book anymore. When I was wanting to start learning and keep learning every day, you actually had to go to a bookshelf or a library or a bookshop and have a book in your hand. But of course now we've got a computer in our hand and the, the, the power of that computer is now, well, you can get anything you want. The Google guys, Larry and Sergey, when they first created Google, one of their goals was to have all the books in the world on, a, on the search engine. And of course, people told them that was, wasn't possible and it would never work. Well, now the Google, which is the name of a company, of course, is also a verb in the Oxford Dictionary, or any dictionary for that matter. We Google stuff all the time, which means we can learn stuff all the time because the Google company puts everything onto the web. Now, the beautiful thing about the Google search engine is you now get to use your own brain and work out whether or not what you're reading is true. And those two questions, why would I do that and how does it work, which is what I'm constantly doing, doesn't matter where I'm learning from. I'm sharing that with you because I've never been bored and I haven't, I don't think in my entire life, now I can't remember, maybe I was, but I can't remember being bored because I've always had a driving force every day to keep learning. So that's my first thing is, are you learning every day? And if you ever feel like you've got downtime or your brain's not getting filled up with stuff or you feel bored, then just go through. And it might be something as simple as your times tables. Because if you keep saying your times tables, you're activating your brain, keeping your brain young, which means that you can't get Alzheimer's and dementia or you're at much less risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, old age brain rotting disease. I don't want to get dementia, so I'm constantly doing stuff inside my brain that keeps my brain active. So that's one of the things I do. I say my goals. Have you got a, a very distinct uh, personal set of driving forces for why you get up every day? Now, some people call them goals. But every single day, I will inside my own headspace if I've got downtime, whether it's I'm waiting for the, the dog bowl water to fill up or I'm, I'm at the petrol station filling up the car. I hate that time because it's, it seems, it used to be a waste of time. But now for me, it's a I say my goals, or I go through my anatomy and physiology, I go through my headspace, how can I explain dementia more effectively, how can I explain type 2 diabetes more effectively, how can I com uh, explain communication skills more effectively, so my brain is constantly working, and the reason I share that with you is I don't want somebody else in control of my brain, which is why I don't listen to the radio, I don't watch the news, I, I'm not interested in other people's injection into my brain, I want to choose what I inject into my brain, does that make sense? And my question is the same to you. Are you choosing what you put in there? Are you listening to criticism, gossip, negativity, nastiness, or are you putting positive stuff into your brain? And if you're constantly putting positive stuff into your brain, my question is how can you get bored? Because if you ask your brain a question, it will search now for the answer. And that's what I love about Larry and Sergey and the whole Google engine system is that's how it was developed on how the human brain works. 
If you think about something, your brain now, your subconscious brain automatically searches all the files in your brain for everything to do with that word. So if you say you're bored, for example, if you type in bored into Google, it will give you all the files on the World Wide Web connected to the word bored. Your subconscious brain does exactly the same thing. If you say you're bored, your subconscious brain says, yes, you are, and here's all the reasons why. These are all the times in your life that you've been bored, and then you start thinking about being bored. Why would you do that? It's uh, about as silly as if you're looking to rent a car and you type in bus trips. Uh, Google will give you bus trips. It's not going to give you how to rent a car. Your brain will give you whatever you ask for. So if I say to my brain, what am I thankful for? And I ask the question every morning, what am I thankful for? And my brain says, here's all the bazillion things, Rowie, for you to be thankful for. What do I want to, I want to learn today about uh, uh, osteoporosis? And my brain is filled up with thousands of files on osteoporosis because I've been studying it for such a long time since my mother was diagnosed with osteoporosis. So I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of files in my brain that are about osteoporosis. So if I ask the question, let's think about osteoporosis, I do because my brain says, awesome, let's do that and feeds me all the files on osteoporosis. Now that's the positive. What about the negative? If I say I'm fat, if I actually say that to my own brain, and I don't have to say it out loud, I don't have to think it, my, my conscious brain has said I'm fat. My subconscious brain says, yes, you are, and here's all the reasons why. And every file in my brain to do with fat now comes up, and I will be thinking negatively about my personal human physique. Why would I do that to myself? Now, my headspace, no one else has control over. Did you know that? No one has control over yours either. You can allow them to control your brain, but that would be you allowing them, not them controlling your brain. So another great example I always use, because I read a lot, uh, is people who went through, and personal experience people who went through uh, concentration camps in the Second World War in Germany, uh, Poland, Russia. Uh, the people that have been in that situation have written books. My parents were actually involved in that situation. My father was in Auschwitz concentration camp. So those people have shared their experiences. A lot of uh, prisoners that were in Japanese prisoner of war camps have written books about being in that situation where somebody was trying to hurt them, damage them, kill them, but they took their brain somewhere else. So they couldn't get bored. They weren't brain dead. Your, your, brain's, your brain is a live sub substance. If you force it to work, it will. And particularly when it's under stress, because when it's under stress, now you've got epinephrine, adrenaline, and cortisol. So you've really got all those stimulants, neurotransmitters to make sure that if you're under stress, you can survive. So where do you take your brain when you're under stress? And the interesting thing about the concentration camp survivors and the prisoner of war survivors, there were some of those people that went into that situation as golfers or basketball players or chess players, or pick any, any skill, doesn't matter. They never played a game of basketball while they were in concentration camp. They never played a game of golf when they were in prisoner of war camp. But when they came out, they were better at golf or basketball or tennis or chess or archery or whatever it was because while they were supposedly locked up, their brain wasn't locked up. So they played the perfect golf game. They played the perfect basketball game. They played the perfect chess game over and over and over in their head and your brain will do whatever you tell it to do. So when they came out of concentration camp or prisoner of war camp, they're actually better at that skill than before they went in. And there's a reason for that, of course, because when you practice something in your head, so if you're going on a hot date and you're really excited about the hot date and you go through it in your head, ideally it's the perfect date. So how would this, and you have to ask the question, what will my perfect date look like? And your brain will now go through the process of what it will look like. If you ask your own brain, please tell me what a shitty, terrible date will look like, your brain will show you. So you've got to be careful what you feed into the set, the search engine, yeah? But if you say to your own brain, I'm going to play the perfect game of basketball, I'm going to play the perfect game of chess, I'm going to play the perfect game of golf. And there's an argument about what the perfect game of golf is, by the way, because it's at a hole in one every time and it only takes 18 holes and 18 shots to, to win a game of golf. But that's just another, another side note. But in your own headspace, you get to create the perfect because it's your head and you can... I love this because education is a study of what we already know. Imagination is the stuff that hasn't happened. It's stuff that you can create inside your own head. And isn't that a beautiful thing? 
one of the things I do when I'm at the petrol station and I'm waiting for the car to fill up is I will go into my imagination and I'll think about a place in the world that I'd like to travel or a person that I'd like to meet or an experience that I'd like to have that I haven't had. See, now I'm imagining something that's never happened to me before. Memories are the past. Imagination is the future. And I get to do that in my own brain. So I can't get bored. When people say to me, what day is it? And I always have a giggle because I sing the happy day song. May your Mondays be magical, may your Tuesdays be terrific. But most days, if you ask me what day is it, I don't know. I wake up in the morning and go, I wonder what day it is today. Because I love every day. I'm never bored because I love what I do. I'm healthy, fit and strong mentally and physically. So I've got a body that's waking up with a purpose. I've got a career and, and a career path and purpose for living, which is I'm an educator. I'm a personal results coach. I love what I do. I've got uh, a focus on being financially free so I don't have to waste time on where's my next dollar going to come from because I've I made a really major purpose every day to make sure that that area is covered over and I've been doing that since the age of 10 because I never wanted to be in a financial situation that wasn't uh, appropriate for my lifestyle at the time. And there's another thing. Are you studying wealth creation? Are you constantly learning about how to make sure that you are financially free? And if not, what a great way to not be bored. Uh, I get a little bit fascinated now as an old lady because when people are bored, they usually pick up their phone. And I often, I'm a bit naughty because I watch what people, if I'm standing up, for example, on a plane or a bus, and I see people on their phone, I have a quick look at the screen and what they're doing. And it never ceases to amaze me how many people are playing some kind of computer game, which is great for your brain, I get that. But at the same time that you're playing a computer game, you could be learning about something that's going to add value to your life to help you be healthy, fitter and stronger. Learn your anatomy and physiology. It's a really interesting and really uh, complex uh, process and you can't get bored if you're learning about anatomy and physiology. If you want to have a career or business that you love, learn about how to do it. Uh, the ultimate anti-boredom program is the Max International Colleges program because it covers off those four areas. How to be healthy, fit and strong and stay that way for the rest of your life and help other people to do the same. How to make sure that you've got a career and business that is successful and profitable. How to make sure that you're financially free so you never have to have money controlling your life and how to have great people in your life. It's the anti-aging, anti-aging, it's the anti-boredom toolbox. It's also the anti-aging toolbox, by the way. So if you don't love your life, if you're not excited every day to be alive, if you're not uh, motivated and inspired by the purpose of your life, could that be something to learn about so that you don't get bored? Uh, I would love everybody to say, and I don't ask people how they are because people often tell me, so I always use this expression, super duper do, how are you? I'm sure you are amazing. Tell me why you're amazing. And I would love every person to share with me, I'm amazing because... I love my life. I'm healthy, fit and strong. I've got a career or business that I love. I've got great people in my life that I can share everything in my life with. My life is awesome. Wouldn't it be lovely? That's one of my favourite Robbie Williams songs. He wrote it for his children. And I wish for you every day to be able to sing, living life to the max and singing, I love my life. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love my life. Woohoo!